Hi, Grey Mouse here with another Apple II tutorial. In this tutorial I will be showing you how to create a virtual hard disk file, add files to it and then use it in Apple Win. Let's start. Alright, so we're looking at this hard disk image file for the Apple II which has got the extension .hdv now the hard disk image file for the Apple II can go up to 32 uh, megabytes have a look here however we do not use Ciderpress to create this image with the archive info it's raw data so we need to create a file which has got raw data in order to do that we need to create a zero filled file in Windows which we can then format to be a hard disk over to the DOS prompt debug space and the name of the file plus the extension and press enter it'll say file not found but don't worry about that so it's going to be a zero filled file so press W to write check out the directory Right, so there's the zero filled file and if we have a look in Windows Explorer it has created the file the next thing we need to do is we need to add a file to this image double click on that it's inside a press it says it's an Apple it's a hard disk file with the extension .hdv if I have a look at the archive info a completely zero filled file here press done go to actions add files it's important to add at least one file otherwise Windows will delete the file from your hard disk to make sure that it's a, a valid file and we'll just add this one and then we close it and hopefully Windows hasn't deleted it oh it's still there and this time instead of being zero kilobytes it's now one kilobyte now what we need to do is hop over to Apple Win. Alright, so the first thing we do is we put in the copy to plus floppy disk. And we go down to the options. Go to the disk tab. This is the where you enable the hard disk virtual hard disk controller. So you tick on the tick box and we select the hard disk file we just created. Open. The way that Apple Win works is that it will attempt to boot from the hard disk first and the floppy drive second. We press OK and okay to this message and we'll double check the options yes it's still there now remember the 
hard disk file we created is not bootable and has only got one file in it. Let's boot it up. Log of the hard disk image. It's in slot 7 drive 1, which is what we've set here. Slot 7 drive 1. And press enter. Because the disk is zero filled and is not a proper Protoss disk, we need to format it first. Format, Protoss, and again slot 7 drive 1. Yes, uh, we'll call it A2 uh, disk drive. And we do a catalog of the disk. Here's the contents of the hard disk. As you can see it's got a total of 32 megabytes which is the maximum size of a ProDOS disk and it is basically a blank usable hard disk. Let's hop into CiderPress and do a comparison. Now, if we just hop out of this, so as you see that the file size is 7 kilobytes, but in the emulator it's 32 megabytes. What will happen is when you add files to this hard disk image, it will increase the file size up to a maximum of 32 megabytes. So let's copy some files over. And we'll just copy, copy to plus the hard disk image. Go. Log the hard disk. There are the files, and if I refresh this, the file size should be bigger. There we go. So you can just keep adding more and more files until the entire 32 megabytes limit has been reached. Side of presses when you create a new disk image. The largest Protoss volume is 32 megabytes. I have not found a way of using CiderPress to create a hard disk volume file. Why I showed you how to do it using the debug program. Let's see if we can boot this one up. Yes. Yep. Just was rather quick but it just booted successfully from the hard disk image. And it's also changed the drive order in priority. That's how you create a 
hard disk image file. You're wondering what I could do with this hard disk image. Well, here's an idea. Let's fill it up with files. Back later when it's filled up a bit more adding some files to the hard disk image you can see that the file size has uh, gone up and that it still hasn't reached the 32 megabytes so still lots more room in there have a look at it with uh, cider press Okay, so these are all individual programs and I've made some changes to the programs to boot the hard disk image. In drive 1 I've put copy to plus 9.1 and there's a reason for that. So it's booting from the hard disk. And we'll just do a PR hash 6. This way it boots off the floppy in drive 1. Let's do a catalog and hard disk image. I've created a couple of folders. This is the main folder. I've added a few programs in here, which hopefully we could use a little bit later. To switch the folders, use the arrow keys. Up the top it says catalog disk games one. Press enter. These are all individual files. There's still quite a lot of uh, space left looking at the blocks free. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder and this is where copy2 plus 9.1 comes in handy um, because you can go down to create subdirectory and select the hard disk and where would I like to create the subdirectory? I'll put it in the root directory. Give it a name. Let's have a look at it with catalog. Sample. Nothing in it. That's ready for me to use. I will add some files to this directory. So far I have gotten since the last time we took a look at this hard disk image. I've added a few directories. 
I've got int for integer games. I've got some games in games 1. I've got some sample files which I'll demonstrate to you soon. And I've got a folder called games 2. You'll also notice that the Apple hard disk file itself is now larger but still not to the 32 megabytes. Catalog of each folder. This is the root directory. integer basic and a integer game. Now the integer basic was used before DOS 3.3 and these programs cannot normally run from ProDOS or DOS 3.3 but I have found a workaround which I'll explain soon. Let's have a look at the other folder. In a, a mix of files, both binary files and AppleSoft Basic files. Let's take a look at the sample folder. This is more a mix of each type of file. So we've got a, a binary file which is called pig.pen and we've got a DOS basic file called Monopoly. We have a integer basic file called Orgle, which is organ in English. Have a look at the other folder. that one's not quite as full. We will reboot and it will boot from the hard drive. Let's get into doing some ProDOS stuff and having a look at Integer Basic. Let's do some commands is short for catalog gives you a brief listing and what I mean by that is if I type in catalog it gives you that kind of listing which is a little bit harder to read unless you've got it in 80 columns so we'll just use cat To change a directory, we use prefix. Prefix sample. The PC's CD change directory. The Apple ProDOS version is prefix. So we do another cat. Now we can just run the programs like any DOS and ProDOS file. We'll start with a binary file. You type in b run and then the file name. This is a common ProDOS error. There is no easy fix for this error message. The error comes about because the program that I'm trying to run is a DOS 3.3 program and it's trying to load it into memory which is used by ProDOS. So the message no buffers available 
means that I'm trying to load this PROS 3.3 program and it's trying to load it into an area of memory which is currently occupied by Protoss. There is no easy fix for this. There are some on the internet but they may or may not work. So the best suggestion is just to delete that program and try another one. Alright, let's try another program. Great, so that's working. The only way to quit really would be to reboot. And we'll go back into the sample folder. That was a binary file. Let's try a basic file. There's two things you can do with a basic file. You can run it or you can load it. If you run it, it won't load the program's listing into memory, but if you load it, it will load the program's listing into memory and then you can list. I'll give you a couple examples. First, I'll run it first. So we're going to look at Frogger. This is a basic program. We'll reboot again. This time I'll load the Frogger program. It's loaded the program into memory and we've got a few options here. We can list the program. This is the game here. We can also run it. So we've done a load, a list, and now it's loaded it into memory. If we type run, it will run the code that you see on, on the screen. If you don't want the program's listing loaded into memory, make sure that you just simply run the program. Next up we have the integer basic program. If I just try and run it, it won't work because it's, it's, it's before DOS 3.3 and ProDOS. However, a user by the name of Rob, who goes under the alias I am Groot on the Atari Age, has released a modified int basic binary file which allows you to run integer basic files in ProDOS. If you have a look at the link below, I am Groot or Rob was the one that has modified the integer basic program. If we have a look at the disk image that you can download, this here is the modified file you can see by the date. And there are some notes here that we can view. If you do want to 
run integer basic games on a ProDOS system you can use this hack Okay, let's go back to the emulator. What you need to do to get it working is you will put copy to plus version 9.1 into drive 1 and we're going to copy the hacked integer basic file from this disk and I have extracted these two files earlier by simply making a archive out of it and then converting the archive into a disk image which I've done here. In drive 1 we got copy 2 plus, in drive 2 we have this disk PR hash 6 And I'll copy the files onto the hard drive. Don't want that one, we need this one, this one, and this one. The other two we we don't need. It's just mainly that the integer basic file has been modified and the startup basic file will actually start the integer basic file so we go and I'll put it into sample since that's where we're working oh and in case you're wondering I did label the integer boot alt as I am Groot there so let's reboot again into the hard disk and we do a cat change the directory cat let's see if we can get all hall working to start the integer basic we run the startup basic file Sorry. Prodos version of Integer Basic. Ampersent catalog. Okay. If you download the disk image, you can have a look at the uh, the readme on how it all works properly. This is the part where we have to choose between Integer Basic and AppleSoft and because Orgul, or Organ is in Integer Basic we press I and as you can see the prompt has changed into a greater than prompt. We use ampersand as per instructions. It's the contents of the sample directory under Integer Basic now we use load by itself and we put in the file name which is awful ok that's loaded it into memory press run and here it is, it's not in English but this is the integer basic program running under ProDOS using a hack by a user on Atari age called Rob or his name is Rob and his alias is I am Groot I hope that gives you an idea on creating a hard disk image for the emulator there's an awful lot of room You've got up to 32 megabytes uh, to fill up you can run programs which are binary files and AppleSoft basic files into basic files.
So I hope you found this useful. Please feel free to subscribe, like this video, and leave any comments below. Thanks for watching.